Now I wanna show you guys how I actually come up with the stuff in the episode. This is the episode layout itself, okay? This is how I lay out each and every episode. Um, okay, I was speaking at this event in, uh, in Dallas. There's a, thousand, there's a thousand people at the event. And at the end of the event, um, we were at dinner and I was sitting with this guy and he's sitting across from me across this table and he just kind of kept looking at me throughout the evening. Just like, you know, I'm used to that in this setting. <laughs> I'm on stage. But he kept like looking at me like kind of weird. After all, I was like, hey, like, hey. <laughs> yeah, resting state is a nice guy, you know? So I was like, ah, don't feel any buttons pushed, but it kind of got a little weird. And after a while, he, he looked right at me and he says, Steve, what are you going to say on episode 479? <laughs> Just out of the blue, no context. I was like, I've, frankly, I'm not even going to think about it until I've done episode 478. And that was it. There's no follow-up question. He kind of leaned back. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Dinner goes on. And it all of a sudden hits me. I was like, wait a second. You think I always know what I'm going to say every episode? And it, it, he said, well, yeah. I said, Oh, <laughs> for shame, for shame. No, that, that absolutely not, <laughs> no. I said, you have to understand how I come up with this material. So this is actually the, uh, this is the layout that I use for pretty much every episode. I've already told you that I've used the Epiphany Bridge script like crazy, but even more simple and more granular than that. So you don't have to think you have to come up with this major thing every time. Story is always 80%. Always. In fact, uh, probably episode like 40-ish, a guy reached out and he said, I wish you just get right to the principle, Stephen. Just get straight to the point. Just give me the, give me the nugget. I wish you go right for the golden nugget. And I was like, okay. It freaked me out. I was like, is this the market speaking? I should be listening to what he's saying. Oh my gosh. So I made the next three or four episodes straight principle. They were the worst episodes ever. They were awkward to create. No one remembered anything because principles are remembered when they're wrapped in story, right? So no one remembered anything, but they were like straight gold, but like there was no value because there's no story. And so I went back and I, I was like, okay, we got to stop this. And I went back to doing 80% story, 20% principle. And then suddenly come, people come back like, oh man, that was a great episode. It was incredible. It was amazing. I changed nothing else except add back in the story. Okay. So I always do story. You start at a place of high drama. Um, you are competing for their attention on lots of platforms, so compete for it. So start at a place of high drama, grab their attention, grab it, grab, okay? And then at the very end or at the beginning, wherever you want to, some point is call to action. And that's why at the bottom there I have CTA. I'm definitely gonna pitch at some point, even softly. All right, in a lot of episodes, I'll say like, hey, if you're interested in this kind of thing, if this is fascinating to you, this is what I kind of go over in Offermind. If you're interested, go to Offermind.com and it's just super soft, really subtle, and that's it but it pushes that golf ball a little closer to the sale, okay? Throughout it though, so I'm gonna be pitching, but I will do a big one at the, at the end or at some point inside the episode. Um, I always put the intro and then in the middle, I'm creating content with the purpose for it to become micro content, okay? How many guys saw some things I can't let out of the pack? Okay, yeah, jeez. <laughs> Did you guys see Russell do the Marketing Secrets live yeah. two and a half hour thing? Yeah. He's doing exactly this, okay? They're creating it with the purpose of using it and chopping to smaller formats and other platforms. So everything ahead of time, everything was planned ahead of time. You guys ever watch like Conan, right? Or Late at Night, like the, or um, uh, Jimmy Fallon? Anyone watch those shows at all, ever? Okay, you know when they like stand up at the beginning, they start telling a few jokes? and they'll like make fun of some political thing going on. They wanna say, you know, Trump or Hillary. Why would, why would they wanna say that? Think about what they're gonna do with it afterwards. Okay, Soundbite. Yeah. Sound what else? Catches attention. Catches attention for sure in the moment. But what is it gonna do on platforms yeah. now that that's ranked for Trump? Right? So they go in and they create shows for the purpose of it to be able to repurpose like crazy. So they'll stand up and they'll say, hey, we got this cool game night show. We're going to compete these top 10 massive topics going on right now that are easily indexable by all search engines. And they'll make a game out of it so they can say it, so they can type it, so they can repurpose it, so it can go all over the place. You watch what they're doing inside it. That's what they're doing. That's why those shows exist. 
oh, let's make this other current event. Let's bring in other massive actor. You have a huge movie about to come that I can align your noise with my noise and go make it even massive, like even bigger. Come on in and talk. That's why they're doing it. Okay, that's how their shows get so big, big enough to go on something like a late night show and get their own airspace. Okay, so it's the same thing. I'm not, understand, this is very advanced as well. Like for the, a lot of times, most people when they're just starting out, like just get you, find your voice, get confidence in it, figure out how to tell story, figure out how to be a character, be interesting in your own way, right? But then when you get down the path a little bit, it's the content that you're creating for the purpose to repurpose it in other places and rank you in the show as a whole, okay? Does that help? Oh, meaning the lesson. Just the lesson. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to tell a story. Hey, here's what, like uh, the Two Comic Club Cruise one that I just put out. What's up? I'm Two Comic Club Cruise. Hey, by the way, looking back, these are the things that have happened that have been really powerful. Let me teach you two fast lessons as I'm sitting here on the ship with waves lapping by me. Right? <laughs> What's that? Oh, okay. Yeah. High drama for something that's not high drama? You're selling sneakers as an example. You told it had high drama to that story, and you're manufacturing sneakers. How are you going to make that drama? How are you going to make the drama high if you like selling sneakers or something that you feel like isn't? not necessarily high drama. Um, Seinfeld has no storyline, and it was the most popular show ever. Yep. You know what I mean? Anything can be insanely, I mean, you can make grass growing a high drama thing, you know? Check out this paint dry. Let's see if it goes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right? You can start that way. I mean, it, it takes practice. But sometimes when it's a topic that I truly don't know how to make big, I'll just, I mean, that's one of the reasons. You guys know why I started yelling on camera? Because my kids were getting in a fight in the background. <laughs> that's why. So I have sound panels across all my home office. That's the other reason I'm excited for an office. <laughs> So I'd hear my little three-year-old and four-year-old at the time start to get at it on the other side of the door, and I'd be like, you gotta build the funnel! <laughs> and you gotta, you gotta, just do it! Boom! Woo! Yeah, baby! And I started yelling so that they couldn't hear anything in the background. <laughs> That's really how it started. And then suddenly somebody was like, he says boom all the time, and it became a shtick. And I did not <laughs> intend for that to be a shtick. I did not intend for Monday Baby to be a thing either. Uh, the way it happened is I just started voxing Russell when I was working for him. I'd be like, whoa, yeah, baby, it's Thursday. Let's build the funnel, son. Uh! And he loved it. And I would do it on Friday. Yeah, what's up, man? It's Friday. I get to build funnels with you. Woo! And then Monday would come around. And one day I just decided to start Instagramming it. And people were like, it's Monday. You have like a great message behind that. I was like, oh, yeah, it was totally full of intent. And it became a thing. Right? That's what I mean. Like, document your life because something that you do that is a cork to you will end up being your shtick because you don't know what that is. Right? You don't know what's going to stick. I didn't intend for that to be a thing. Either with the boom or the capital's pig or the big eyes thing. I think someone made fun of me for that and I decided to take it and run with it. Okay? So, like, you, it, it's, this game is far more forgiving than you might be thinking it is. It is not so formulated. Content isn't. It's about you being you louder. That's why I keep saying that. Okay, as far as how I come up with episode ideas, I got a few minutes here, I'm gonna go fast, okay? This is how I come up with episode ideas. I always love to publish things around personal vulnerability and the growth I'm going through. Very hard to do. I recommend you don't start with that if you're really, really nervous um, because you're gonna get raw, okay? Uh, cool stories of things going on right now. I'll think through and be like, oh, what's happening right now? Like when I was on that ship, I was like, what's happening right now? I'm on a cruise ship on some island I can't say the name of. This is gonna be awesome, right? Let's do that and have that be the background this time. Business lessons, stories, growth, right? Things that are going on in the business itself. Um, hey, we're trying to solve this problem, that problem, vice versa. Um, number four, I think through strategy moves I'm making in order to solve a problem. Um, so that's why I created that episode with the theme, uh, uh, the day after the million dollar day and all the crap that's been going down. Like that's why I created that episode is strategy moves I'm making because of problems that started. And number five, keywords, right? A little more Peng June method. Hey, we should go after this keyword. Every once in a while, John Parks will reach out and be like, hey man, we don't like the guy who's ranking for ClickFunnels marketing funnel on YouTube. Um, he's not, he's, he's like kind of disparaging or he's kind of saying something we don't like that isn't aligned with the message. Could you go review ClickFunnels membership sites and the fact that we can do them and we'll put you up there instead and we'll try and rank that instead. I was like, oh sweet. Right, that's a strategic move in order to keep controlling space. So 
Um, that kind of thing, though, will definitely be uh, an episode uh, stuff. But this is actually my problems whiteboard. I just took that screenshot before I left. These are all the problems that I have identified are problems. I'm not trying to figure out if I should solve them. I'm trying to figure out if I should solve it. And, uh, but this is part of the things that I go and I toss in. Okay. All right. Keep going. Yeah. This is some of the ways I am me louder. I'll share opinions. I'll share things that I'm afraid of. I'll share goals that I'm currently going for. That one's hard. You notice I haven't really done a goal video this year, and I've done it five years in a row. It's because it's getting a little awkward with some of the numbers my goals are. And my families and friends see that, and uh, it separates them further, and I don't want that. So I'm trying to figure out other ways to be public about my goals while not pushing away people who still don't like what I do. See? You see what I mean? Things that I need help on or I'm helping others with. Um, as far as me being louder, uh, becoming the attractive character, like I'm, I am actively trying to see ways that I can uh, be more and more interesting. Like we sat back and that's why we were like, how can we make, how can we make It's Monday, baby, even cooler? Like, man, should we do Play-Doh? Yeah, sounds good. Oh, what if we had a, right? And we start thinking through crazy methods to deliver the same material, right? Um, this shows as much about you as it is uh, your topic. I want you to know that. Whatever it is that you create, it's as much about you as it is whatever the, the show topic is. In their eyes, like it's mostly about you and a little bit about the topic. And for, at the beginning, they'll come to you for the topic, but they'll stay because of you, right? They'll stay because they like you. There's other people talk about offers. I mean, they're probably dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? People stay because they like me, but they started following because of the topic itself. So understand, that's what I mean, like the relationship there. You do have to become an attractive character for this. Um, now, there's a few uh, methods that I use as far as... Um, Actually, let me tell you one of the biggest benefits I have with this. When I was following Frank Kern before he, you know, when he was still kind of a hippie a little bit, and now he's a little more clean cut. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, anyone ever read the book Content 2.0 from him? It's a good book. It's a great book. He did a great job with that one. Um, he started talking about this thing called a pillar topic. He said, over time, you'll start teaching the same five-ish topics over and over. These are your pillar topics. And so what I've started doing is I've started keeping track of my content. Like, oh, this episode was about this topic. Interesting. Look how many I have on that. I didn't know I spoke about that that much, right? Uh, like, uh, oh, uh, content creation. These are all the episodes that created the material you're going through right now. Okay, because I kept track of it over time. I didn't do it on purpose, but as I started, it's one of the major benefits of continual publishing. You'll look back and be like, I have a lot of opinions. I have a lot of advice. There's some great stories. Let me go back and re-listen to these and go deep on one silo, one pillar. And this is uh, huge. So you see a lot of my pillar topics uh, are in the green there. Capitalism, <laughs> campaigns, um, my journey, people like my story, you know, sleeping on a bench, all that stuff. Um, offers, that's a definitely pillar. Market positioning. It was in the, the podcast that I discovered a lot of those things. Um, it's just su super interesting. Uh, finding your dream who. Um, some of the things I talk about with bootstrapping, but I don't want to be the affiliate guy. So I've stopped talking as much about that stuff. Business marketing plan. The problem with me talking about business systems and business strategy is I'm not trying to be the business guy either. So I'm starting to sh shut off and chop a lot of those strategies. I just want to be offers and marketing uh, in, in funnels. Um, but this, this is a major blessing as you start moving forward to sit back and go like, dang, I, let's look at all the things I'm talking about here. Now as we launch the new show, we, I have a lot more, it's like I have a lot of personal interest in these specific pillars. And we have a, even more focus on what things will be about moving forward only because we're looking backwards and saying, man, check these out. Um, when I'm creating, uh, so we're about to create this 30-day Seinfeld series. We have like 70,000 people on my email list and we really don't email like we should and I have like very few sequences unless you're in a funnel, we should have a sequence that introduces people to what I really do, that walks them through and says like, hey, here, here is the story, here's what happened, and by the way, here's the lessons on, if you're, are you brand new? Sweet, do this. Are you experienced and you're just trying to grow? Awesome, do this. I have the material, so what we did is we, we are ordering these 30 in a row, and I sent them to a copywriter to go create them into epic emails, and then we're gonna load them into a really cool Seinfeld series for the whole value ladder. To be cool. Um, yeah, yeah? Okay, yeah. some of the outros here that I like to create. These are the topics of outros that I like to create. Um, here's free goodies. Go to suchandsuch.com. 
Um, one of the awesome ones that I've done to start shows and get them off the ground and kind of cement them in place is I'll have people come ask questions to me and I'll play their question in an episode. There's a really good tool that does that called SpeakPipe. SpeakPipe has been awesome. I'll embed it on a page. They can click and right there on the page, it records their question as a voicemail and sends it to me over email where I can download it. So then I just put it straight in the episode. So-and-so has a question, let's go to it real quick. Hey Steve, I have a question about X, Y, and Z, I've been listening to you for a while, what about blah? And then I spend the rest of the episode answering it. That's a great way to get episodes. Speak pipe, super cheap, really awesome. Let's you embed straight into ClickFunnels. I've been using that for like four years. Um, ask campaigns about future products. So when I know I'm about to launch something, I'll start testing material to see the best ways it should be presented. But then I'll also, I want feedback on it though. So I'll be like, hey, I've got this beta group going on or hey, come into this private group for a little bit and for a little bit here, we're gonna let people come on in and test this thing um, if you just give me feedback on it. Um, this, is, this is a huge one, ask campaigns about future products. I will say that this last one is the greatest marketing benefit though of actually launching a show in my opinion. Pre-launch, campaigns. Right, I was, uh, was mowing the lawn, <laughs> mowing the lawn, and I was listening to this podcast of these guys who were telling, uh, they were launching a software, and they're launching this software, and uh, you know, I have interest in software. We will definitely be a software company, I'm sure, in the next few years here, if not in one or two, and, um, and I'm really geeking out on software. And uh, what's interesting, I was listening to these guys, and their software wasn't launched. For eight months, I tuned into the show. Eight months! where they made an episode about each, indiv in each individual feature that they had just finished coding. So then they were like, oh, we just finished this and we ran into this huge problem about so-and-so. So we reached out to our people over in Singapore and then we reached back over to this guy who's in New York. We finally got a way to figure around. We're really pumped about it because it'll allow people to go do this. The issue has been X, Y, and Z. I mean, it's a sideways sales letter basically in an episode. And now if I had just logged into the show, I would have been like, or if I just logged into the software, I'd have been like, oh, cool. But now I'm like, this feature and this backstory, and they almost didn't make it. And oh my gosh, now I can click it and it does it, right? And these guys had me so dialed in for eight months. I didn't even know it wasn't out, like for the first four. They just started telling all, I did it. For the first four months, I was just like, that feature, oh my gosh, that is cool. Okay, what about this? Oh man, they're so right, this is amazing. And then I go to start looking for it, and I was like, what the heck, it's just a waiting list page. Okay, I joined the waiting list, we're okay. Make sure I set up some notifications because I need this when it comes out. What is it gonna come out? Please send it out, right? And they go. And I started realizing how much major affinity had been built up for the software. I walk into Russell's office and on his calendar, it says software secrets launch. I had no idea that we were gonna build the funnel for those guys. I was just listening to a show on iTunes about software. It was the software secrets, the guys. The guys, anyone buy that or have that? That's how that happened. About eight months beforehand, I had no idea we were gonna go do that for them. And I started listening to it. And then I, after it happened, I was like, whoa. I, I always made it a habit to be the first purchaser of any of the funnels I built at ClickFunnels. And Russell was like, why are you doing that, dude? He's like, you built it, just log in. I was like, dude, I don't just, I don't just drink the Kool-Aid, I make it too, man. Like, right? <laughs> I make the Kool-Aid and I drink it, right? And I was like, I'm gonna be the first buyer of this thing. So I was, anyway, I always tried to be the first buyer of everything we, sh we launched. And, um, uh, but I started thinking about the power of that. And it's one of the major reasons why I think a lot of the products I've launched have done so well out of the gate, okay? There are launch campaigns and there are evergreen campaigns. And I use content for both. It's one of the rare ones that actually does both. If I'm allowed to go in and pre-frame and build pressure for a launch, pressure, 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 it's coming on this date, time, and location, this date, time, and location, only available for here, scarcity, durance, here it comes, boom! Drop it out, get on the waiting list, right? Then boom, shut it down, I take that revenue, and then I go dump it into my evergreen campaigns. My customers fuel my ads. I've never put a dollar on my own in my business ever. Okay, it's with that relationship right there. And content is one of the only places where I can go and do the launch, get the cash that we need to fuel the evergreen campaigns, but then turn the funnel back on and content continues to sell over and over for the long term. Very, very rare. Can't really do it on Facebook, can't really do it on that, but, but continually publishing off of those staple platforms really does that. Oh yeah. <laughs> like five minutes. Okay, here we go. 
these are a lot of the outros that we use. Um, I make a bunch. Every time we create a, uh, a, a big product inside our value ladder, I create an outro for it. Capitalism swag, Capitalist coaching, Shoffrin rocks. This is an affiliate thing for him, right? Free clickfunnelstrial.com, free cftrial.com, free opt-in course, influence and income, interview me, right? Offer lab, 30 days, affiliate outrage, ask your question script. Um, there's a bunch, I can, it's a huge amount. But I shift, uh, Russell doesn't change his outros too much. I change mine a lot, a lot for long time listeners. Okay, uh, could, you, could you click on your final offer, the top one there? Hey, if you're like me, you love marketing and sales strategies, right? I have a hunger to learn new marketing and sales strategies all the time. So I recently reached out to 98 marketing experts to ask them how they sell their products. But I decided I wanted to do it in kind of a clever way. And here's what I actually asked them. Your doctor suddenly delivers terrible news. You're diagnosed with an unknown disease. And unless you stop working, in exactly 90 days, you will die. You have a thriving business, an epic cash flow, but now you need to use your marketing know-how to trim it all down and prepare for your final offer. What steps would you take to plan, create, and launch your final offer that will fund the rest of your life? Now, of the 98, only about 30 answered, and I decided that I'd turn my video interviews with them into a cool, free virtual summit. If you want to watch the summit for free and see what their final offers would be for the rest of their lives and how these experts use their skills to keep their offers selling for the long term and even how they set it up so they have very low management, literally just go to yourfinaloffer.com. That's yourfinaloffer.com and sign up for the free summit now. Hey, there we go. Okay. So uh, usually my outros are about a minute, minute and a half. That's kind of my style. And I will go through and I told a small epiphany bridge script. I also told why they should listen and the benefit they'll get. And then I gave them a call to action. That's basically it. And um, I do the same thing for One Funnel Way, for the Emblem Funnel, those are a spicy one. And um, basically, I'm just creating little tiny mini pitches to go push into different things in the value ladder. Um, this is cool because, remember, it gets transcribed. It, gets go, it goes to YouTube. It goes all over the place. So now my link, right, L putting links all over the place is still, like, awesome to do. But now the links are all over the place, and they're not just in text. They're also in audio. They're in video. I put them on, on cards now, right? And um, this has been really, really cool to help spread the funnels uh, post-launch as, uh, as well. Any questions on this? I get <laughs> you just laugh. <laughs> How many questions are there? <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, we have 80% story that as far as the episodes go. I always brainstorm a bunch of episode ideas. And, and I'll be honest, like most of my ideas come while I'm in the shower. <laughs> and I start to wake up and I go run over to a board and I go write it on down. Um, I track pillar topics over time. And those are the ones I really drill and dive into. And that way I can say, you know, I am a offer guy, right? And I can make those statements. And, um, and then the outros, they always lead to a value ladder step, always.